Whether you're building a CNC or whether you want to make a power router lift, today's the video for you. I'm going to show you a nifty little trick that can really simplify your design and your Z-axis, and it's perfect for a power router lift, easy to do, and a very inexpensive way to put a power lift on your router table. I always promised myself if I build another CNC that I would make my Z-axis a little more elegant. If you can see, this is the board that rides on the x-axis and behind it I fastened another board just to get it some space and on it I put a little shim and then I put my motor mount. It would be nice if I could do that much more elegantly and less cumbersome. I'm going to show you how to do that today. Here's the secret to the new design. What you're going to do is you're going to do an inset in the actual board that you're directly mounting your rails on and instead of using the metal router plate, we're going to fix the motor directly down, and we're going to put threaded inserts uh, on either side, and then we're going to put a board on top, and we're going to anchor it down with quarter-inch screws. I'm using three-inch quarter-inch screws, but three-and-a-half or four-inch might be a little better choice. I would do three-and-a-half-inch quarter-inch screws. If you don't already have a CNC on plywood, a three-eighths-inch drill bit, brad point, drill in the holes. You can thread the inserts right in. It's not really necessary that we get those inserts below the surface. You can put a bolt down from the top. It's really easy to over-engineer this. You want to put extra space in the pocket for the motor so it's got leeway both directions, and you want extra space going this way. If you're clever and it's a z-axis, you want to have the motor so when it sits that it slightly trails off the end so you can feed your wires out the back and you don't have to cut a hole in your board. And when you get all done, this can be mounted and you can have a router lift. When you fasten on your ball screw, I highly recommend you either put thread locker or you put a split lock washer. And so I had one of these vibrate loose on my other CNC, and uh, you don't really want that if it's way underneath a platform, particularly if it's on the y-axis or the x-axis because it's hard to get to. So put split lock washers or put thread locker that's removable. Second thing, when you mount up your ball screw, make sure that this is facing upward and not downward. Uh, if you put in the threaded insert, this is so much easier. First block you want to always put in is your BK12. You can set the other one on there, but just don't screw it down yet. I only put inserts in the, the top hole and the bottom hole. Don't try to put it in both these holes or you're probably going to weaken the joint. It's better to just have these two. If I had this already pre-drilled or I wouldn't have probably even drilled it. Screw in the BK12 first. There's rhyme and reason to this. The other block can float and so it's easier for alignment to do this other one first. This other one should be lined up. Line up your bolt. Should catch. And tighten it down. Get your other one. Tighten her down. Should be solid there. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to put on our bearing blocks. Make sure you have the little Allen uh, set floating on the outside. Make sure this is going to the outside, otherwise you're going to have to disassemble. Outside, we're going to put on our router plate. If you're doing a router lift, you're not going to need to have nearly as many holes as I've got in my router plate. But if you're just doing power router lift, the plate that we're going to put on there will just need these four holes, these holes for the, the bearing blocks. You can print a pattern with open scads. When you put this in, this can be a little tricky getting this one. This is the first one you always want to thread. And so set on, line up your holes, look down from the top into the bearing block. And here's the trick. Have a two screws in, one on each side, so that you can push down and it will level this thing out as it goes. Uh, for the short axis like this, it's not really needing more support. I don't think you need a shim in here, uh, even though these are gonna be a little bit proud. I would put a shim if I was using it for a long axis, particularly if it's for my center of my table. But for this, you just need a longer screw that will catch these threads. Once that's on, don't over tighten it and then go set these and tighten them down. And then if you want to snug this down just a little bit more, you can. So let me grab my 
mount and I will show you that now. Line up these bearing blocks with these outside holes so you just look down from above. So if I was doing this, I just set this on here and kind of look through until I can get it lined up, one of them, and then shift the other pattern around and do the same thing on the other side. So shift it so that I know that this is parallel. And then I'm going to put a little downward pressure on those blocks. So push down on the board and then you can look down from above and you can line up your holes for your center ball screw. That will save you a lot of headaches. This is a trick worth its weight in gold. You can go diagonal, you can go directly across, don't do it on the same side. I'm pushing down at the same time from both sides. And what that's accomplishing is it's keeping that ball screw, give us something to push against when we screw it in. And once the threads are caught, you're home free. You don't need to go too tight. I'm just spin in my hand if you want. And don't over tighten these things down. <laughs> Tired of twisting all these in. You can save yourself, just don't overdrive them and strip out a, a setting that's bad. All right, that is mounted up. And uh, you can see that we can move it. So that's good. That's a good sign. Let me We need to get our motor on here. First of all, just line up the shafts and fill the shafts. If you cut your pocket perfect, the round side of the shaft, because there's a flat side. I, I cut this about a millimeter too deep. If you want to error on a side, undercut the pocket, and I'll give you the dimensions of what I would recommend you start with. And then you can always take a piece of sandpaper and sand it down. Because I've already cut this, and I don't want to redo this entire board, what I'm going to do is just, just take a few playing cards and I'm just going to put them underneath this until literally with my finger that I feel that that is a line. So I'm only a millimeter or so and you could, you know, shim this with whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. It's not off by much. It's the thickness of three playing cards, but you might as well, while you're clamping everything down, get that axis absolutely as centric as you possibly can. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put on our coupler. This is a 10 mil hole on this side and a 10 mil hole on this side. And of course the shafts are 10 millimeters. So I'm going to go ahead and slip this on. It has a set screw. Get it tight first. We already know that the height is right. So now what we can do is just slide in. The advantage of playing cards is they're plastic and they have a very thing. And you can see that it just absolutely glides on there no problem and then I'm going to rotate it and I'm going to, to tighten down the other set screw so push it in I like to have it just a little bit so it's not touching an actual shaft you can back it off just a hair otherwise this shaft and this shaft will hit internally if all is well I should be able to turn this and sure enough we got a we've got our gantry set up the next thing we need to do is we need to mount our router. They're a quarter inch, inch and a quarter. You could definitely get by with an inch here. I'm just going to set a couple in each side, tighten these down. These are three inch long screws. Three and a half inch would be better. You don't need this many holes, but I didn't know how well it would hold. It works exceptionally well, so I'm just going to set this in here and line up those and now we're just going to use quarter inch bolts and tighten down a board over the top and so it's important that you have that motor shimmed properly because if you don't you could put a torque on this whole thing and you're tightening these down tighten them down a little at a time so we get even pressure across the top and we have a, an inset. I also found that you don't actually need the inset. You don't need an on the inset on these bolts and you don't need an inset for this motor. I did do a 40 millimeter slot through this. I was thinking that that would be necessary to keep it from moving. But when I tested it with regular you know, bolts just pushing down, uh, I couldn't get it to, to move. It was extremely rigid even without the slot. It, you know, it, 
Design-wise, it's better to have the slot, but it's not really necessary. And this thing is completely rigid. This motor shaft still turns well, so we didn't put it out of alignment. We're ready to wire this thing up. We've got ourselves the router. Up. 